Hey, ladies and gents, and welcome back. Today, woo, we got a good one. We got a good one. So this is a pair of NYX boots, not just any NYX boots, but some tried and true tested NYX boots that have been out fighting forest fires, mm -hmm. covered in soot and yep. everything. Up on the Northwest coast. And the guys at NYX boots, uh, this pair actually belongs to one of those gentlemen. This video, by the way, is not sponsored by NYX. Uh, it's just a, a, fun fun collaboration. a fun collaboration. And he said, I've actually used these boots out in fires up in the Northwest, and I just want you guys to have fun with them. I'm gonna mail them to you, do what you would like. But he did mention a dress boot. So yeah. you can so, use your yeah. imagination. All right, let's get to it. All right, so this is gonna be a little tougher than it usually is because these boots are obviously built like a tank. nails on that thing. Crazy how just intact these things are to the soul. I mean, just trying to get these off is insanity. All right, finally got the sole off, which was again a beast. Now we're just going to remove the shank here before we get into the really good stuff. Got it taken apart, and like I said, now the fun begins. All right, so we are putting a new insole on, but we're using Elast. Um, 
This last is a little bit different because it doesn't allow for such a tall hill like a logger hill. Uh, we're gonna go for a shorter hill, so we have to have a different shape here, and we'll have to redo the shank to uh, accommodate for that. But we are creating a new insole made out of leather, and we're just nailing it to the last now, and then we're gonna trim the edges. All right, so we are not gonna create a hold fast on this. We're gonna do a little bit different type of construction. So um, I'm just bringing this in just to taper the waist a little bit. So it transitions when we pull it in. You won't see a huge rib. I mean, a, a big bump right there, but uh, we don't need to actually carve or leave any room for a rib, so. All right, so this last is a little bit smaller, uh, I'm sorry, larger than um, the upper that we're working with. So we're really having to kind of stretch this just a little bit to make it work. And so we're, we're, this doesn't have a whole lot of seam allowance. So this isn't your kind of traditional lasting. So we can pull it over and then it's gonna have a gimming underneath. We're actually gonna use the thickness of this leather and the lining leather, which is quite substantial. It's over eight ounces um, to stitch the welt to. And then it'll be um, glued down just like the original construction was, but instead of a stitch down, it's gonna be flipped up and used that to stitch the welt to. So that's why we're just trying to get this uh, back up to where it's just a little bit higher than the insole. And we wet this down to help stretch it and to uh, allow it to mold into place when it dries. Now this is one that I actually wet and uh, lasted last night and um, it should have dried and molded by now, so it's kind of a moment of truth. All right, so if you're curious to what this is actually being held to, this welt, it's this thick, thick leather that they use for their out, um, uh, the outside of their upper. Um, it is basically, a, they use a stitch down construction and basically what this is, is extending the, the stitch down construction. It's the same thing, but with a separate welt. So it's actually gonna look more like a good year welted shoe, but it's kind of just the same thing as a stitch down construction. It's just not long enough to restitch this, especially after we had to stretch it over this uh, larger last. And so it'll give it kind of a more traditional look. 
Okay guys, so while Heath is putting the welts onto the boots, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the midsoles. We'll prep those and then as soon as he's done, we'll get those uh, midsoles and soles applied and go from there. Now these last have a plate on the heel on the bottom, so all these tacks will go straight down and crimp. All right, so when I was first taking these apart, I made the assumption that they were gonna have a steel shank in there, I don't know. Um, but found out they were using this uh, thick thick leather shank and then with this thick thick leather shank cover on top of it and i like that uh so i am gonna reuse that part of it You may be asking yourself, why is he hammering that saw? You also may be asking, why is he using these little pincer things? And the answer, ladies, is the last. Because you can't put a last on the press, so we gotta do it the old fashioned way. That's my, uh, my channeling my old school. So why'd she? Hey, why we're actually gonna insole this is because this isn't actually a Goodyear welted uh, shoe. It's strictly, um, like I said, it's kind of like a stitch down, but instead of flipping out, it tucks in and it's connected to the welt. I still want something that's gonna hold this to the insole that we built. So that's why we're gonna insole stitch it, just like the original Nick was, 
the insole was insole stitch and then we will outsole stitch um, the outsole onto this. So that's why we're doing this. So yes, I had to take the last out, but that's just kind of what you have to do. All right, so uh, obviously the midsole is now stitched on and we're just gonna put some glue on here, put a little more glue on the sole and then we'll get those pressed together and then not too much more, put the hill blocks on, hill pads and that's about it before we start on the uppers. Okay guys, so just get you caught up because we've had to uh, <clears throat> run out of time. So we need to make sure that we leave a little bit of time in order to be able to do the uppers. All we did, we went ahead and put on these stacked leather blocks. Uh, so again, that is individual pieces of leather that we stacked together. And then we went ahead and add the top lifts here um, and ink the sides. We're gonna go ahead and buff these off and maybe add some tacks around the, uh, on the top lift. And then, we will get started on the uppers and then they should be all done. So let's get at it.
Okay, so let me give you guys a quick rundown of what we're doing. So this is not gonna be the easiest boot by any means to get a shine on. Um, the vamp area right here, as well as the counter area back here, were rough out leather, which means it had the nap of the boot all up here. It was not meant to be shiny. Um, we've taken a lot of that off, and as you can see, just from using the, the head of the hammer, I was able to bring out a little bit of a shine. And then the quarters up here are like an oiled leather, so that's gonna be almost impossible to get a shine on. And I think what I wanna do is get a nice shine, or try to get, try be the key word, get a nice shine up here on the vamp, on the counter, and then let that stick out and look a little, have a contrast between the quarters up here. So I'm gonna put some conditioner on there. I'm gonna put some shoe cream and try to get some color back in it. And then I'm just gonna work the wax and this mirror gloss wax, which is just a really hard wax. Uh, all on this and see how much of a shine I can get. Okay, so here's where we're at. I have put the conditioner on these boots. I have put shoe cream, uh, black shoe cream all over these boots, and they already look a lot better. Being able to put a mirror shine on these things in the amount of time that I have today is impossible. Um, unfortunately, I do have a lot of orders from you folks to get to take care of, so we might have to finish these up later as far as the high gloss shine goes and see if we can do it. But for the sake of this video, what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and start putting some wax on here, put some of the, the uh, mirror gloss wax. And again, for all of you guys that wanna do it yourself, make sure you're not putting a lot of wax, especially the mirror gloss wax, if that's the, the brand you choose to use, up here we're on the part of the vamp where your shoe creases. You don't want to put a lot of wax on that crease area because it will make the wax crack um, as you start walking. So make sure to keep it down here on the low end. Okay, let's get to the waxing and let's see what we can do for this video. Okay, I'm still working on these boots. And I think what the method I'm gonna go after is we're gonna hit it military style. So, you know, we grew up in the military and I remember throwing the wax on there, using the lighter and using the fire method to try to melt that wax and fill in the pores. And man, these things are a beast. I put coat after coat of wax and I tried the fire method on one of them to really melt that wax in there and man, it looks much, much better. So I'm gonna put a lot of that mirror gloss wax all over this boot. I'm gonna take a lighter, we'll melt it on there, and then we'll just continue on from there. But quick recommendation, don't try this method with dress shoes. I mean, if you want to, feel free, knock yourself out. But if they were mine, I would not recommend it. You know, for something like a boot like this, a military boot, etc., it's totally different. Uh, again, these are fire boots, so that's what they were used for originally. But be careful. Don't really try it on dress shoes. Okay, we're back. After all of that, after about three days of in and out work, mm -hmm. you know, we got to do our normal day-to-day -day routine, repairing y'all's boots and shoes and whatnot. So we had to work on this for three days. 
intermittently throughout all of that. But before we show you what we did, guys, we want to tell you something. Down in the link below in the description, you definitely want to click on it. Um, we've been talking to Nick's, and there may be a collaboration uh, that you guys will really want to know more about. Yep. Um, so go down below after this video, click on the link, put in your email address, and we will keep you on, up to date on what's going on with this collaboration. Trust me, it's something a lot of you guys have been it's asking really for, cool. yeah, for years now, and um, it may be heading your way. So check it out, leave your email. Also, also, also speaking of Nick's, they have started their own YouTube channel. Now, there are a lot of brands out there, but there's not a lot of brands that use YouTube and mm -hmm. start really cool videos telling about their their uh, footwear. Nick's, I've been binge watching these things. Yeah, and they're, they're really they're, entertaining. They're entertaining, yep. they're informative. And, and they're American made. And they're American made. Yep. And it's a, it's a really cool uh, channel. So check out Nick's boots. Yep, and subscribe to the yes. channel. All right. Recap these things for them. Okay, where do we begin? So again, these boots came in, they were fire boots made by Nix. I don't know how many years ago, but they had been put through the ringer. When we got these, there was black soot from fires all over them. It took a lot of scrubbing over and over again to get the, just the leather cleaned off alone. So we scrubbed these boots down. We took off, how many inches, Heath, off the... Uh, they were 10 and we went down to six. six I believe around six, six inches. inches so yeah so we cut them cut the tops of these or cut these boots down a little bit um we added brogue holes to them mm. uh, he asked for a dress boot well that's what we had to do so we put brogue holes on the toe uh all along the boot um we really wanted to give that kind of old school uh almost, upland field hunting boot yeah, you know yep. you would have seen in the old days and that's what we wanted to do it was a dress boot but it was a dress boot that was made to be out in the elements yeah we looked at a lot of other brands like he said from england and whatnot use those boots as inspiration uh, of course you're not going to be able to make these boots look identical to it but that was the inspiration behind the boot toe medallion broke yep. holes what did we do again remind everybody what we did about the it was a stitch down construction yes. and how did we change that so remember Nix is famous for their stitch down boots. Um, we wanted to take that flip, that flared out leather and tuck it up underneath. Now this was, we used, a, we had to stretch it over a little bit larger last, about a half size difference. Mm -hmm. So we had to really soak that thing, stretch it over, and then use that flip down. We actually could use the stitch holes, the previous stitch holes, and use that as the new gimmick. So yeah. we kind of used that to turn it into a hybrid between a Goodyear welted shoe and a stitch down, kind of halfway in between. Yep. So we pretty much changed out everything on it. We put in a new uh, insole. Uh, we put on a midsole. Mm -hmm. um, we decided to make, since it was a dress boot, we went with JR leather soles. That's what he asked for. Uh, he also wanted toe plates. We did that as well. Um, did a little tacking along the uh, heel black. Speed yep. hooks. Yep. No, new gold. The gold, yeah, yeah gold, gold. Yep. and then remember, this was a rough out construction. Yes. Well, most of it was rough out. So to get a napped rough out <laughs> to be able to lay down, we we really luckily we had the last, and it makes it real hard, and we could wet it, and we just had to burnish yeah. the heck out of this thing. Yeah, that's the part you guys didn't see. Um, while we were working on the boot, the other guy would kind of take it and just take our. The, like he said, the head of the hammer and just work that nap down, trying to get it as smooth as possible. And we did a lot of sanding before that too, to kind of take a lot of that nap off. And that's kind of where you guys caught it from that point. Um, and I just had to cake on the wax, trying to fill the pores in as old much as possible. Military spouse, yeah. Actually. Yeah. So, you know, yep. Took the old lighter to it and that's what we were able to do. Now, if I kept working at it for hours on end, I'm sure I could obtain the mirror shine because uh, I know if some of you guys will be like, why didn't you go for the mirror shine? Time but is money. Time is money. We ran out of time. So I got them as glossy as I could. And uh, I think, man, I, I think they look good. So, yeah. you know, if you guys enjoyed this, we always appreciate the big thumbs up. That always helps our channel grow. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Tell your friends. And this is an exciting video. I'm yeah. hoping this video does well and you guys like it. So if you do like it, please share it with friends, family, you know, whatnot. And let's get this ball rolling and, and get the video out there because we really had fun on this one. Okay. All right. Is that it? That's it. Till next time, y'all have a good one.